Hey guys, good morning. It's Friday and that means that we have another workshop in our studio. Today the workshop is small spaces. And by the way, do you see that behind me? Yep, we're getting our suitcases ready because on Monday we leave for Photoshop World. And of course, the workshop in New Jersey. Now, why do I teach a workshop called Small Spaces? It's actually pretty easy to explain. The most heard questions is actually, Frank, I can do this because I don't have a big studio. Or how can I make a great picture if I don't have a room? Well, in all honesty, that's true. A big studio, of course, helps. But a big studio is not something that you need for great shots. Actually, when you work in a tight space, you can be so much more creative by using that space. I dare to say that even some of my best images are shot in very tight spaces. Good morning. Because if you are in that tight space, you can actually push yourself to do stuff that you normally don't do. For example, make your model touch the sides of the space or make a squeeze in. You can do all kinds of crazy creative stuff. And that's what today is all about. So join us for today's episode of Behind the Closed Doors, the workshop Tight Spaces. Okay, but first, before we start the workshop, there's a packaging from our friends from Ellen Grom. And I wonder what it is. It certainly isn't a D-Light set, because it's way too light for that. So this is a surprise box. So let's see. You know I love this stuff, right? Okay, that's one. And all the way in the back. That's two and three. Okay, here we have some flyers from Ellengrom. And a diffuser for the deep translucent 105 centimeters, I think. And yes, it is. This is the new Deep Umbrella from Ellen Grom. Now, I was looking forward to this one because on location you always want to travel light, but you also sometimes want to bring something big. And these are the new umbrellas and they're actually the deep kind. So that means that you can still steer the light because that's one of the things I don't like about umbrellas. When you look at the conventional umbrella, it just spreads the light everywhere. And this thing should actually solve that, but it should because it's a deeper size, it can actually steer the light just a little bit better. I wonder if there's also a grid for this, but let's find that out later. And of course, you have the diffusion sock. So you mount your strobe like this, like with a normal umbrella. It just aims the light towards the back and then it steers the light out again. And because it's deep, you will actually get a really nice beam of light. Really looking forward to trying this one out. Maybe I'll even squeeze it in in today's workshop. I think we can. Okay, so it comes in this really nice carrying bag. And let me see. Still see me? Mm. There we go. And now you don't. Really great for the Dutch weather. Is setting up the umbrella is really easy. It's the same way as you used from the other softboxes from Ellen Grom that actually use that really great system that you don't have to work with rods. You just push in and it clicks. Same here, you just open up the umbrella and as soon as it's a little bit open you just push this out until it clicks and you're done. And on location you have a really nice big softbox but it's not a soft box because a soft box is rectangular and I don't like rectangular. I like it more round and I really love that the inlay is actually silver. You know, I like my lights a little bit more crispy. So this gives you a really nice crispy light quality. Really looking forward to testing this out today. And I'm not an umbrella kind of guy, but this one really looks nice. Hey, yesterday on the Waco Mobile Studio Pro, I already updated my windows to the brand new Windows 10 Creators Edition. And at the moment, just before the workshop, you might call me crazy, but let me put it this way, I have faith. 
I'm updating this to the creators update. Now you might wonder what is the creators update? Well, look it up online. There are many, many videos about it, but why am I enthusiastic about the creators update? It's actually the game mode. I'm really looking forward that they also gonna allow to use the game mode, for example, for Photoshop. So now it's aimed at games. So when you play a game, you put on the game mode and all the resources from the system are actually aimed towards that game. At least that's how I understand it. They updated some stuff in Edge. I still don't know if I'm gonna use Edge. I really like Chrome on the PC. And another thing, that, and that's something that really got me a little bit more excited about this update, is they actually have a way of scaling your apps. Now, I'm using a 4K BenQ monitor, as you can see here. And I'm totally in love with that monitor. I really like it. But sometimes when an app isn't really built for 4K, what you can see is that it, it looks pretty small. It goes like, okay, where's... Where should I put that pointer? Now, on a 32-inch monitor like the BenQ, that's not really a problem. But when you work on a 15.6-inch, like on the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, it can be a real problem because, well, it's very accurate, but still you have to really pinpoint your cursor exactly where you want. In the Creators Update, you can now actually go into the app, go to the properties, and now tell the system to scale the app for you. So now Windows can actually scale it if your manufacturer, dare I say it, is too lazy to do the scaling for ultra high definition screens like the 4K screens. So that's something that really got me excited. There's a lot of other stuff like 3D paint, which I'm probably not going to use. But I'm really looking forward to testing out this new system and see if it makes it a little bit more smoother. Although I have to be honest, a lot of people have asked me this. How do you like your transition to the PC? At the moment, I'm totally, totally satisfied with it. I'm running this PC since December, and a long time I had it overclocked on 43%, which is insane in my opinion, and it didn't have a hiccup yet. So no blue screens, no screens whatsoever, no black screens, or I don't know, I don't even know what color the blue screen of that is anymore because I never saw one. So I'm totally happy with it, and cost, price, and performance, oh my, it's a huge difference between a Mac. And, well, with this little Nexus dock on the bottom, <clears throat> it actually doesn't feel that much different from a Mac. It's just my wallet really loves me now. Hey, the students have arrived, so let's start the workshop. Small spaces, and our model today is Claudia. <laughs> Said some awful words, and I know that we both got hurt. But I wanna be with you. I wanna be with you. We can't let this slip away. You know that I want you to stay. Cause I wanna be with you. I wanna be with you. Don't run away. We can't let this go to waste. I don't want nobody else. Don't let this go to waste. Okay, the workshop is done and as you can see I'm installing at the moment the creators update because something really weird happened. This morning I installed the creative update, it's the creators update, it started up and it seems to be working fine and then I just went like, hmm, where are all the extra menus? They weren't there. So it's just running my old windows. So during the Q&A I thought, you know what, maybe I did something wrong, let's update it again. 
And again, it just started up with my old Windows. So Windows 10 before Creators Update. And I'm now trying it for the final time. I did change some stuff in the BIOS with the Securo boot. So let's hope that works because it always started up with a blue screen that it couldn't read my EFI. So in the BIOS, we now changed everything to Secure Boot. So let's hope that after this, I'm actually able to run the Creators update. On the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, it worked flawlessly. So let's see. Okay, this installation went great. The only thing I changed was actually the Fast Boot and the Secure Boot. And everything works flawlessly. And of course, the first thing you do is calibrate your monitor. Now, in this case, it's the BenQ 4K. So we're using Palette Master from BenQ and of course the X-Rite Color Analyzer. And when this is done, I can start retouching. Then I have to edit the vlog for you guys. <laughs> and then dinner and I hope a relaxing evening. Very, very important. When you update to the creator's update and you do actually own a monitor that supports HDR, this is something you have to be very, very careful for because it freaked me out a little bit until I started to realize what was going on. If you look at this, this is the BenQ and it supports HDR and it looked really washed out compared to the other displays. And normally the BenQ has great color and great blacks. Now in the new creators update, there's actually an option here in your display settings and it's called HDR and advanced color. Turn that off. And now I have my deep black colors back. So, if you update, make sure you check that setting. Okay, let's quickly take a look at the pictures. This is with the new Ellingrom umbrella. Really love the contrast here. It's a great modifier and it's relatively very cheap. This was done in between two walls. And this was shot with just a very simple 70 centimeter deep octa with a grid. I so really like the light quality here. And this is with a really low angle. And now actually on top, you can see the light source. And finally, not finally, by the way, we have more. This is done with a strip light from this side, as you saw in the video, and a blue gel from the other side. Now, these still have to be retouched because I don't have time to retouch now. So I'm going to do that tomorrow morning. And the last set was actually a set we shot with a ring light from Let Go. And I really like the quality of that light. It's a LED light, so you don't use strokes, of course. It's continuous lighting. And I still have to select the shot I'm going to retouch from these. I really love the sunglasses. It's the first time we ever used those. I think I'm going to do this one. I really love this way that she looks. Hey guys, if you like what we do, please subscribe to our channel, let other people know about it, and of course leave comments below. If you want something else in the vlog, or if you have any questions, just leave them below. And who knows, maybe your question will be answered in the next episode. See you guys, see you guys, bye bye. Both